Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be doing a, t a video on reverse T3. What is reverse T3? We'll talk about the testing for it, the significance of it, what does it mean? And before we do, please smash that like button. Really appreciate it. Put your comments down below. Let me know your opinion and thoughts on the topic. And before we dive in, uh, give it a share as well. All right, let's dive in. What's cooking with T3? So reverse T3 is basically your inactivated T3. So you have T4, which is your relatively inactive thyroid hormone made by your thyroid. T4 is tetra iodothyronine, right? Tetra meaning four, iodo meaning four, uh, iodine. So four molecules of iodine attached to tyrosine molecules. And then there's a deiodination process where they you pull off an iodine. Deiodinate means pulling off, subtracting one iodine. So you go from T3, T4 to T3, okay? And that is involving the 5-deiodinase enzyme. That deiodinase enzyme is made by the liver. Certain enzymes will convert that, the 5-deiodinase um, enzyme and the 5-prime deiodinase will convert it to reverse T3. So during that process, depending on the enzyme production, we'll either take that T4 and go to T3, tetra iodothyronine, that's T4, to try iodothyronine. Remember, three iodines, that's T3. Or it can take it to the reverse T3 depending upon what's happening. Now, what are the regulatory mechanisms that are driving this reverse T3? So first off, reverse T3 does not have the same metabolic effect as T3 does. It's relatively inactive. I kind of, my analogy is it's like metabolic blanks in your gun, if you will. You put it in, you pull the trigger, you hear a bang, but there's no bullet, right? Well, same thing, metabolically reverse T3 sits in the same receptor sites that T3 would sit in, right? T3 increases your metabolism, right? Hunger, motility, energy, mood. It, it kind of docks into that receptor site. It does not have the same um, effect, right? It's not having the same metabolic effect. It's a much lower effect. The problem is it took up a receptor site. So now other levels of T3 that are floating around can't dock in. So it actually lowers your active levels of T3 by one, shunting um, the production because you only have so much T4, right? So if you have T4 going to T reverse T3, there's less building blocks getting, getting converted across that bridge, so to speak. And two, it's docking on receptor sites that's also blocking active T3 that's floating around the bloodstream. So that's kind of the metabolic 101 right there, physiology 101. Now, what are the factors that can affect that conversion? So stress, obviously. So high levels of cortisol can easily affect that conversion because think about it. Your body's like, hey, I'm stressed, fight or flight, chronic stress. How can we, how can we decrease our body's ability to, to burn up and, and deal with more stress? Let's slow down our metabolism, right? Because if you're basically have a high metabolism and you're stressed, you're just burning yourself up faster. It's like throwing gasoline on the fire, right? So it's just a way of preventing that fire from going out of control. This is what your body's thinking, right? It's always hardwired for survival. And if you're burning yourself up too fast, if they're burning the candle at both ends, your body's designed to kind of help modulate that back a little bit. So high levels of cortisol are a big thing, of course. Uh, issues with selenium is gonna be a big one. Potential liver stress, liver issues, glutathione. These are all important things that can affect that conversion of T4 to reverse T3. So anytime we test someone with thyroid, a thyroid issue, we're looking at a full thyroid panel, right? We're going to look at a TSH, a T4 free, a T3 free, look at that whole conversion, T4 to T3, maybe total as well, T4 total to T3. We'll look at reverse T3 if we see imbalances in the T3 levels. I'm, I don't run T3 all the time, but if I see low levels of free T3, a lot of times we may throw a reverse T3 in just to make sure nothing's happened in there. But typically... What does the reverse T3 mean if I see there's a problem? Well, I always go to the adrenals anyway. So almost always, if I see someone with low levels of T3, I may test it. I may try to test that for the reverse T3, but if not, I'm always testing the adrenals. I always make the assumption that if the adrenals, if there's imbalances in cortisol or cortisol rhythm, and I see low levels of free T3, I always assume there's probably some issue going on there with reverse T3. So we're trying to fix the cortisol, modulate the cortisol, right? We're trying to give more selenium, give more zinc, really work on all the nutrients that help thyroid conversion, and then make sure we have cortisol under control, and then make sure all the other factors that could be affecting cortisol, food, digestion, infections, mold toxicity, any other toxic stressors, we got to just make sure all those other things could be let's say don't get missed, right? They don't go under the radar, so to speak. We're on top of them. 
So in general, T4 to T3, that's how it should happen. That's inactive to active thyroid hormone. Sometimes it can go downstream under the bridge to reverse T3, which lowers your metabolism. Factors that are going to affect that are going to be adrenal health, cortisol imbalances, zinc, selenium issues, um, other types of mold or toxic stressors could help as well. And then, of course, potentially infections because those all create inflammatory stress and they decrease nutrient absorption. So reverse T3 could be an issue. You may want to look a little bit deeper at it. Most importantly, get your T3 levels looked at as well as T4 and TSH and your antibodies. And if you see imbalances there, you may want to also throw on a reverse T3 on the retest just to make sure. But in general, my rule of thumb is I always look at thyroid with adrenals together because they have a big overlap of symptoms. Whether it's anxiety or mood issues or cold hands or cold feet or fatigue, they kind of overlap a lot. Usually with thyroid, you see more cold hands, cold feet, and hair loss. With adrenals, you may see more just fatigue and mood issues, but they can overlap a little bit. So it's always good to have both sets of tests side by side. That way you don't miss anything. So again, this is Dr. J here. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you did, click down below. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to dive in deeper and get your thyroid and your hormones looked at, this is what I do worldwide. You can click down below and schedule the consult with myself and colleagues, and we're happy to help you all. All right, guys, have a phenomenal night. Take care, y'all. Bye.